Hello, welcome to Stories in Time. My name is Eloise Schottler. I'm a storyteller. Today I have a story about my grandchildren and my children and me all hooked together over the topic swimming. The other day I was working on a family photograph album, gluing some things in, and on that page was going to be a picture of my daughter when she was younger, my daughter, and then her three sons with her when they were small. And they were at the beach and they were all wearing their bathing suits ready to run down the beach into the ocean. And it brought back so much memory that I began to think about how things had been when we'd all go out to swim. Well, it turned out that Robin had called me about a week or two before I started working on that album. Mom, Mom, Danny, he's the middle child, was four years old, he swam across the pool today, and you wouldn't believe how proud of himself he is. And I said, I certainly would. I would believe it. Good for him. Give him a special extra hug from me. And as I hung up the phone, I knew that I had had a hand in that because his mother was a good swimmer. And he knew that, but I had had a hand in the fact that Robin was a good swimmer. It happened when my children were of age for swimming lessons. First, Jimmy got his swimming lessons. He's tall, he's the oldest. The next one was Karen, and when she was tall enough, she went for swimming lessons. And then was Robin. Now, when, when Karen went for her swimming lessons, I was always right there on the side, and I'll tell you why. I don't swim, but my husband that I had married over 50 years ago is, was a swimmer. And he thought, and I think all swimmers think, that their children are just due to be fine swimmers. And his obligation was to take them to swimming lessons and then take them to the pool every day. Well, that was fine, and it was a good idea on his part. But you know what happened is the person who was the swimmer was working and so guess who took them every day to the pool? I, who am not a swimmer, never was a swimmer. But my mother scared me of the water by the time I was 10 years old. Don't go too near the waves. You'll be caught by the undertow. Because see, she wasn't a swimmer either. But finally, I had gone to the YW in Charlotte and taken swimming lessons so that if I was there and needed to do it, I could swim and people thought I was swimming because I could move my arms in an absolutely beautiful stroke. And as long as I could stand in the pool and keep my feet flat on the bottom and walk across the bottom, they thought I was swimming. And I carried that along with me for a while until I went to a camp in the mountains of North Carolina, around Asheville, when I was 16. And the counselor there felt so sad for me because I didn't swim. I didn't want to swim. I was just strolling in the water, sort of, you know, just keeping my feet wet. And she came over and she said, I want to help you. I know that I can help you swim. And so I gave in. And she just said, lay down on the water. Relax, relax. I'll be right here with you. And she slid her hands under my back and was walking a little. And then I felt her when she slipped her hands out from under my back. And it startled me so much that I put my feet down. We were in a mountain stream that had been sort of 
dammed off to have a swimming place. And I put my feet down and I hit a bottomless pit. I went down, 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 and there wasn't any bottom, but I came back up screaming and raising, waving my hands all around, and she seemed to think I was playing with her. I was drowning, and finally she realized and grabbed me and pulled me out, and the next thing I knew, somebody was on my back giving artificial respiration. And I didn't tell her, but my decision that day was, I'm not a swimmer, I don't care about that, I'm not ever going to be a swimmer, period. And my life will be just fine. And then I met Jim five years later. Five years later, I married a swimmer. So we know where we are on that. Jimmy was a very good swimmer. Karen didn't need any lessons because she had adapted for herself. When she was about three years old, she did this thing where she would walk around the pool and then she would just jump in to the deep and go down to the bottom and push back. It was sort of like, you know, sort of like a somebody fish that was crawling along the bottom of the pool. And I finally was desperate to how to keep up with her because I could not jump in. I told everybody to jump in if she seemed in trouble. And I bought her a rubber hat for her head that had the big yellow daisies on it so that I could stand around the pool and keep track of where she was and that she was coming up. And the next one was Robin. It was time now and she had the height the mark on the pool, she had the height to take her swimming lessons out at Andrews Air Force Base. And so I said the night before, isn't it exciting? Did you know that tomorrow you're going to take your swimming lessons? It's going to be so exciting, you're going to just love it. I'm not going to do that, Mom. Why are you not going to do that? Karen and Rob and Jimmy are swimming. They're having such a good time. You're always there in the little pool. In the baby pool is what I like. Well, you're tall enough now. You're ready to go into the, into the pool and learn how to swim. I'm not going to. I'm not. And so the next morning we got up to go out to the pool, the three of them. Karen, Jim, Karen and Jimmy were on a swim team, young, on the swim team. It was Robin's turn to get in the line and learn the lessons for how to swim. I don't want to. And I said, you have to, you have to. And she listened and then she went and she got in line. And finally, I heard this scream, and she came running around. I sit in a chair, usually. And she said, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that. Why should I have to do that? You don't do it. Well, that was one of those moments that a parent has to face sometime or other. And I knew that I needed to do something right now to help her not try to be like me. So I said, well, let's just go right around here. I want to show you something. And so we walked around the pool. I had on a bathing suit. We walked around the pool and came over to where the lifeguard was sitting up on a short tower. He was the guard. And I went over to him. I said, Robin, just stand right there. And I said to him, would you please come down here? I need your help. Quickly, please help me. And he slid down. I said, my little girl doesn't want to take her swimming lessons. And he looked at me like, oh, lady, what do I care? And I said, I can't swim. I am afraid of the water, and I don't swim. But you see that diving board right over there? It's the low board. And he said, well, yeah, I see that. I, I said, I'm jumping off of that in about a minute. And I would appreciate if you'd stand here, right here next to the ladder, 
I'm going to jump toward the ladder. And if you'd stand next to the ladder, you're probably going to save me. Can you do that? Well, he was startled. I said, there's only one more thing I'd ask you for. Will you please just pick up that stick with the hook on it so that if your arms aren't long enough, you can put that stick out and something I can get hold of? And I said, Robert, just stand here with the lifeguard, and I'm going to show you something. Now, my heart was just pounding. I could hardly hear any sounds in that pool that was full because my ears just weren't working. I didn't hear them. And I walked around to the low board pool, board. I stepped up on it, and it had that plastic grass that they used to put on them. And I stepped up, and it all stuck in my feet like little needles. And I thought, well, I will remember this. And so I walked out on the diving board. And I got out there. My heart was tripping. And so I turned toward him. And I stood up and held my arms up as high as they could go. Are you watching? Yes. And I dove in toward him. Now, I didn't go very deep. It was July. The water was warm. I didn't go so deep. And I reached out as I came up, reached out. And within a second, my hand touched the side of the pool. And I grabbed that little trough that's in there and pulled myself over. And then I crawled up into the side where everybody was walking around. And I looked around, I said to him, thank you very much, I can't thank you enough for this. And I looked around to see Robin. She wasn't there. She wasn't there. She was in the line to take her next jump into the pool. She had realized that she had to do it. She became a very good swimmer. She was a lifeguard. And so she saw that her sons, except for the youngest one, who was too young to have swimming lessons. And so at two, he really couldn't, but they were at uh, Plum Lake up in um, one of those mid-states, mid center of the country. And I got an email from her. Um, Mom. Scotty fell off the pier this morning. I didn't see him get near the pier, and I turned around and I looked, and he was gone, and it was so deep, but when I looked down, I could see the whites of his eyes, and I jumped in right behind him, just like I'd been trained. I went right down behind him, under him, and pushed his butt up until I pushed him over onto the war, to the pool. to the side of the pool. He's all right, Mom. He's all right. And then there was a sign of little dashes all the way to the end of the page. Thanks, Mom. Love. It's sweet to remember those things, isn't it? It's really sweet. Thank you for stopping by to listen. I call this story Swimming. <laughs>